Okay, I'll um, just quickly introduce myself and what I'll be talking about. So Jonathan New from CSIRO. Um, I'm a researcher, data scientist at the CSIRO Environmental Informatics Group. Um, I've been working on CISFOG for a little while and I guess I'm the main maintainer of the canonical CISFOG um, repository. Um, and so today I'll be um, just giving an overview of what CISFOC is, if for those who don't know what it is, and then providing an overview of some of the latest release updates um, uh, later in the talk. So CISFOC, um, the CIS part of it stands for Spatial Information Services Stack, um, and that was a project um, or product that came out of the OSCO project. Uh, so the vocabulary service was part of the stable of services and products that came out of that um, project. Um, CISFOC is um, essentially a web server for publishing vocabularies. It's not for creating the content um, that goes into um, a vocabulary definition, but we, when you do have it and when you do have it in a particular format, um, CISFOC can be used to publish it by the web. Um, and by publishing, we mean via standardized link data APIs. Um, it provides uh, consistent APIs for accessing um, the SCOS content, which is the format that we assume these vocabularies are going to be published in. SCOS is the W3C standard for publishing um, things like vocabulary, simple lists, um, and taxonomies, and you know quite simple knowledge organization um, structures. Um, CISFOC also provides auto-generated landing pages. Um, so when you do load up your SCOS vocabulary into this web server, um, you automatically get landing pages for all the concepts and um, the links get generated to related um, concepts within the vocabulary. Um, and that leverages the link data API um, but it generates a HTML view, which is what people may see on the web in your browser. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this, this product or web server software um, came out of the OSCO project, um, and it's been around since 2009. Um, we're in version three now, so there's been a couple of iterations, but essentially it's fairly stable and has been working well um, for what it is. The link to the page where this scribes is over there, sysfog.info. Um, so if you're curious, um, you can have a look there. Um, why use sysfog? So it's really designed to enable access to your vocabulary content over the web if you're a publisher of vocabularies or if you have vocabularies. Um, mentioned earlier, it's for providing auto-generated landing pages so you don't have to write them yourself. Um, you just have to define the vocabularies using the standardized SCOS um, format, and um, the pages are generated for you. Um, sometimes clients and users want um, APIs to power other web applications, so particularly JSON um, for JavaScript um, rich uh, web applications. Um, and typically, for those sort of web developers doing those web applications, you don't want to deal with huge queries, Sparkle queries to the back end, which is a triple store, which is equivalent to a SQL query to a relational database. You don't want to keep querying using that block of text over the web via API to, to the back end. Um, and another reason for using SysFoc is um, users often adopt it because it's a lightweight it's an open source software solution built on other open source products and is existing, so you don't have to roll your own if you don't need to, um, assuming all the features that you want to hear. So what do I mean by the auto-generated landing pages? So I've just picked uh, one vocabulary definition that I could find um, via the ANS or ARDC Research Vocabularies Australia platform, um, and I happen to look at Geosciences Australia's um, uh, geology vocabulary. Um, and this is an example of bedrock. 
um, published via the SysFoc instance that's styled according to RVA's requirements, um, colors, fonts, whatever. Um, and it's just presenting the SCOS definition of bedrock um, with the various uh, fields and values for bedrock. Um, GA also mirrors this with a SysFoc instance of their own on their website, and it looks like this, um, and styled according to their needs. So these are all automatically generated, um, uses templates to style it essentially, but the content comes through as you know, a web page. Um, and yeah, you can, there are links to that. So it's cool. Um, what do I mean by APIs? So uh, SysFoc uses an underlying um, component called Elder, and Elder comes with linked data APIs. And these linked data APIs provide you various formats as um, to access them, access the vocabulary content through. So this is just uh, the JSON version. Um, if you're familiar with JSON, and this is the RDF version, so machine readable versions uh, of that same definition. Um, there are a couple of web widgets as well that's part of the ecosystem. So ARDC or ANS have a um, web component widget that takes a SysVoc instance and produces a list visualization like this. Um, and this is what's what you see on RVA. Um, we've also, through work with Monash University, developed this um, tree visualization tool. Um, and it also just uses any existing SysVoc instance and you're able to um, dynamically expand and present um, this tree-like view. So um, uh, that's that's another widget that, that's built on top of SysVoc, so for presenting things. You can embed this within either of this within a, a web page um, or just take screenshots and you know, embed them within a report. Um, or another option that we tried um, in another project called eRiffs is to enable um, further exploration of data that embeds some of these vocabularies within a database of um, observations and results. So you can provide some contextual exploration of data using these tools. Okay, um, who should deploy SysVoc? So um, definitely if you're running a project or you're developing a system that requires you to provide vocabulary access to your end users, um, then SysVoc is ideal. It's a web server that will, will just deliver what um, those APIs and uh, auto-generated landing pages. Um, if you are seeking to publish vocabularies on behalf of a communi community, uh, such as Research Vocabularies Australia, um, what, what they're doing, then you know you can um, spin up uh, many SysVox for different vocabularies that you want to host on behalf of the community. Um, so just an example of where SysVox is used, particularly in Australia, um, these organizations. Um, there are others that have been that are project based as well. And there's not all of CSIRO uses it, but there's a few projects where we use it. Who should use SysVoc deployments? So once you deploy SysVoc, um, who, who should use them? So if you are a research project or um, initiative looking to adopt existing vocabularies and definitions, or you're part of a community that wants to leverage existing vocabularies, then you should look to some of these um, vocabularies that have been published via SysVoc or RVA or um, such uh, platforms. Um, if you're building a web portal or mobile application that you need some drop down lists that have already have vocabularies being published already, then this is a way to do that. Um, if you've got applications requiring data validation using some vocabulary content, um, this is a, a way of doing that as well. So um, we've previously used that in the uh, Bureau of Net project where we have an XML um, data payload that that um, describes the data using some of the vocabulary content, um, such as what sort of observation is it. Um, uh, so you know we can validate that those XML or other data payloads with the vocabularies themselves um, to ensure integrity. Um, other use cases include. Um, 
publishing uh, reports in a consistent way. So say you have multiple reports that use a core set of vocabularies, you sysvoc deployments could be used to help make those uh, glossaries being produced and the terms being used with the labels um, consistent. So just some examples. All right, so now that we know what sysvoc is and what it does and where, who should use it and where you should use it. Um, I guess the main update from us uh, in maintaining sysvoc is that earlier this year we've done a little bit of tidying up and maintenance and released version 3.6 in April. Um, so we've slowly moved towards having this on GitHub um, and having the repo be the point of truth um, both for the source code um, as well as the build of the uh, web application software itself. So we have an automated build of this, this sysvoc software via the Travis continuous integration components that's um, hosted on via GitHub and also by Travis. Um, so any changes that we make generally go through an automated build, which is nice for maintenance. Um, fixes and, and additional tools. So we've done a bit of a cleanup of the existing landing page with some of the issues that have been hanging over. Um, and then there's also a build script now that um, uses Python. It's a Python build script to generate a sysvoc configuration, as that can be a bit tedious. And the last one, which is probably um, uh, something that's uh, novel, is the deployment via Docker. So Docker is a containerization technology. Um, it's widely adopted now. Um, and many open source products are available via Docker. Um, and what this means is that if you've got a computer or virtual machine, or if you're spinning stuff up on AWS, you can have these, um, you can use Docker to deploy um, any of those software components and orchestrate, um, orchestrate uh, their use in, in the cloud environment. Um, so we've invested a bit of time to Dockerize Sysvoc. Um, and it's available via the Docker Hub, um, uh, or Docker Hub repository, and you can just pull that down and, and run Sysvoc. And I'll just illustrate, I guess, the benefit of that. So this shows you the guts of Sysvoc. We've got um, uh, the components that Sysvoc is built on. We've got the triple store, where typically you load your vocabulary content. We've got Elder, which is the API kind of generic stack where you use the sysvoc configuration to tell Elder how to configure the APIs. And so users basically come in with the landing pages and APIs up here, and they're generally happy because they can get what they want, which is good. Um, but the problem is uh, doing a deployment of the RDF triple store is manual, editing the configuration is manual, uh, deploying the required components to deploy Elder is manual. Um, so there's many buttons you need to press and things you need to do each step of the way, and that adds up, right? So that's just for one deployment, um, which, you know, it's okay if you're doing it one off, but if I'm a deployer, I, I kind of just, you know, be a bit mad and groan about it. So. Um, Deployment from zero to go is days, maybe weeks. Um, you need to read documentation. You need to figure out. Maybe you need to ask questions, and and so it's not all smooth sailing. Um, and then you need to spin up another one again, for example, and that's manual. So, or you need to spin up the same one again. You can't remember how you did it, and that's limiting the re repeatability. Um, so what we've been doing is providing a way to streamline a bit of that using Docker. So there are um, existing triple stores that you can deploy using Docker. So um, Fuseki is one, um, and RDF4J is another. So you can start to streamline how you publish your content. And um, assuming you've done your configuration of Sysvoc, still manual, but um, the rest is generally, there's a workflow to automate it using Docker. So ideally it will be one button push to a triple store. 
ideally, once you've got the configuration, it's a one button push to deploy um, SysVoc. Um, one or two buttons. Um, and if you're the deployer, I think that would be a much happier state to be in. And deployment from zero to something running is you know, hours, maybe even minutes, depending on your requirements. Um, maximum, if you know what you're doing a day. Uh, repeatability is fairly automated. If you want to redeploy the same thing or tweak something and redeploy another thing or deploy multiple endpoints within um, one scenario, if you've got, you know, say 10 vocabularies, you want to publish via 10 separate um, sysvox, then that's, that's fairly, um, uh, fairly automated as well. Um, there's a bit of configuration, of course. It's not all automated, but in terms of repeatability and maintainability and deployment, it's a lot more streamlined. Okay, so just to summarize, um, SysVoc is a web server for publishing SCOS vocabularies, features um, automate, automatically generated landing pages and a linked data API. There's an existing ecosystem of related tools um, and deployment tooling, as well as the widgets. Uh, I'd say deploying SysVoc has never been easier, um, and that's a claim by me. So if uh, you've got feedback, please uh, please provide that to us, and we're always looking to make it easier. Um, if you like a tech demo, I'm happy to give a tech demo um, offline. If you've got any feature requests or feedback or issues, um, the GitHub is the best place to to provide that. Thank you.